Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about small bowel obstruction on CT scan. First, we will look at the most common cause of small bowel obstruction, that is small bowel adhesion. An adhesion is the formation of scar tissue between the loops of small intestine or between small intestine and other structures such as the abdominal wall, the omentum or other organs. These adhesions can restrict the normal movement of the bowel and cause small bowel obstruction. Now the most common cause of an adhesion is abdominal surgery. So if a patient arrives with small bowel obstruction and they have a history of abdominal surgery, then the most common cause of small bowel obstruction is adhesion. We will compare the CT image of normal bowel with small bowel obstruction images. These are axial views. In the image on the left, we have a normal small intestine. The level of this image is below the kidneys. In this image, the jejunum is seen on the left side and the ilium is seen on the right side, near the cecum and ascending colon. Intravenous contrast medium is used, which enhances the bowel wall. This is the enhanced normal bowel wall and water is used as an oral contrast agent. The normal diameter of small bowel must be less than 2.5 cm and the bowel wall thickness should be less than 3 mm and this dark gray area is the mesenteric fat. It appears dark gray or hypodense. This is the normal appearance of the mesenteric fat. In the image on the right, small bowel obstruction is present. You can see dilated bowel loops, small bowel loops with a diameter greater than 2.5 cm. If no other cause is seen such as a hernia, volvulus, a bezoar or a foreign body. If none of these causes are seen, then the cause of the obstruction is most likely an adhesion. This small bowel obstruction was due to an adhesion. A coronal plane is very helpful in studying the small bowel. The jejunum is located in the left upper quadrant. It has a thicker wall and more prominent folds. The ilium is seen in the right lower quadrant near the cecum and ascending colon. This is the ilium. The jejunum has thicker walls so it appears slightly brighter than ilium and the number of jejunal folds are greater than the folds seen in the ilium and the duodenum is seen up here in the center. In this image, we can clearly see dilated bowel. The dilated bowel loops are filled with hypodense fluid. The diameter was greater than 2.5 centimeters. You can also see prominent intestinal folds. These folds are called valvulae conivents. Normally, they are not this prominent, but when the bowel loops are dilated, these folds are more clearly seen. So these two features indicate small bowel obstruction. And if no other cause is seen, such as a volvulus, an intestinal tumor, or a hernia, then the cause is an adhesion. A transition point is a very important feature in locating the small bowel obstruction. The transition point is the intersection between a dilated bowel and a normal bowel. 
Here you can see dilated ilium and this junction is the transition point and after this transition point you can see normal collapsed ilium. So this is the location of the obstruction. The dilated bubble loops are seen proximal to the obstruction and the normal collapsed bubble is seen distal to the obstruction. It pinpoints the site and cause of obstruction. The transition point can occur anywhere in the small bowl depending on the underlying cause of the obstruction. In this case, the obstruction was due to an adhesion. At the transition point, there is an abrupt change in the diameter of the bowl. The bowl loops proximal to the transition point will be dilated. Their diameter will be greater than 2.5 cm and the bubble loops seen distal to the transition point will be normal appearing collapsed bubble loops. The diameter of these collapsed bubble loops is usually less than 1.5 cm. And here you can see prominent intestinal folds and also you can see increased bowel wall thickening. The thickness here is greater than 3 mm. This is another axial view of the normal small bowel at the level of the sacrum. This is the normal ileum with some gas. These black areas are gas. And this is the cecum. In this image, you can see a dilated ileum. And this ileum is normal collapsed ileum. This point is the transition point. To study the obstruction thoroughly, you can view the images in both axial and coronal planes. This small bowel obstruction was due to an adhesion. Here is another image showing dilated jejunum. This point is the transition point. You can see normal collapsed bowel distal to the transition point and the dilated bowel are present proximal to the transition point. So this point is the site of obstruction. If a dilated bowel loop is filled with gas and heterogeneous soft tissue density, it is called a small bowel feces sign. The dilated bowel loop is filled with black dots suggesting air or gas along with low density fluid and particulate matter. This is how feces appear in the colon. This appearance mimics the appearance of feces in the colon. That is why it is termed as small bowel feces sign. This sign is seen in some cases of small bowel obstruction. The small bowel feces sign is present proximal to the transition point and it is absent distal to the transition point. This is the transition point and you can see normal collapsed bowel distal to this point. Here you can see a small bowel feces sign. The dilated bowel loop is filled with black dots which are gas bubbles. This type of appearance is normally not present in small bowel. This is the transition point. Dilated bowel is seen proximal to this transition point and the normal bowel is seen distal to this point. The small bowel feces sign is usually seen in the ileum, specifically the terminal ileum. This bowel obstruction was due to 
Abizor. It is a swallowed foreign material which fails to digest properly and can lead to small bowel obstruction. This case of small bowel obstruction was due to a cecal mass. A tumor is present in the cecum, which is the cause for this obstruction. You can see the transition point over here, where there is an abrupt change in the diameter of the ileum. So this is the site of the obstruction. A closed loop small bowel obstruction occurs when a bowel loop is obstructed at two different points and you will see a C-shaped or a U-shaped loop, a C-shaped or U-shaped dilated bowel loop on a CT scan. This U-shape or C-shape is due to obstruction at two points. In this image, you can also see a U-shaped dilated bowel, indicating a closed loop small bowel obstruction. This was also due to adhesion. This small bowel obstruction was due to mid-gut volvulus. We are only focusing on small bowel obstruction in this video. We will go in detail about features related to volvulus, hernia, intersusception, and tumors in separate videos. Right now, we are only focusing on small bowel obstruction. So this obstruction was due to volvulus. In volvulus, you will find anti-clockwise rotation of the mesenteric fat and superior mesenteric vein around the superior mesenteric artery. This whirling appearance is termed world sign. Normally, this is how the mesentery appears. It appears smooth and you can see both the superior mesenteric vein and superior mesenteric artery in cross section. They are adjacent to each other. Whereas in this image, you can only see superior mesenteric artery with a distorted superior mesenteric vein and mesenteric fat. So this was the cause of small bowel obstruction in this case. Also, there is free fluid, acidic fluid present. This hypodense area is the acidic fluid. This is another image showing a closed loop obstruction. The dilated loops have a C-shaped appearance. There is also a radial distribution of the dilated bowel loops. You can also see branches of mesenteric vessels radiating towards the obstruction. These gray colored lines are the mesenteric vessels radiating towards the obstruction. This feature is also seen in a closed loop obstruction. And this point is the transition point. And there is another transition point over here. A closed loop obstruction will have two transition points. You can see normal appearing bowel over here. So this is the transition point and a second transition point is over here. This small bowel obstruction was due to a paraumbilical hernia. You can see the bowel protruding through a defect in the abdominal wall. The hernia sac contains the small bowel. So this hernia is the cause of small bowel obstruction. The bowel loops are dilated and have prominent intestinal folds. This obstruction was due to an obturator hernia. There is protrusion of the intestine through a defect in the obturator canal. 
the intestine is present in the hernia sac this hernia was the cause of small bowel obstruction in this patient in this case an inguinal hernia is present which led to small bowel obstruction you can see protrusion of small bowel in the inguinal canal the hernia sac contains small bowel which led to small bowel obstruction in this case the bowel loops are dilated with prominent intestinal folds in this case the small bowel obstruction was caused due to a femoral hernia normally no bowel loop is seen in the femoral canal but in this image you can see bowel loops in the femoral canal in this image intersusception is present trapped mesenteric fat is surrounded by bowel indicating intersusception and this was the cause of small bowel obstruction a strangulating closed loop obstruction occurs when blood flow to the bowel is compromised leading to ischemia it is a very serious condition along with dilated bowel loops you will find increased bowel wall thickening and an increased density in the mesenteric fat outside the bowel this increased density in the fat is a strong sign of bowel ischemia normally the mesenteric fat appears gray it appears much darker than the bowel but these areas have an increased density indicating congestion in the mesenteric fat in this image you can see a dilated ileum with thickened bowel wall a transition point is also seen over here this coronal view is of the same case in the previous image where we saw this same case in axial view mesenteric congestion was seen in axial view which indicates small bowel ischemia which means it is a strangulating closed loop obstruction the dilated bowel are u shaped a target sign is seen when there is significant bowel wall thickening in a strangulating obstruction along with this target sign we can see hemorrhagic fluid collection in the mesentery the mesentery has a heterogeneous appearance and it is filled with areas of increased density a cytic fluid is also present these low density areas on both sides are a cytic fluid this increased density in the mesenteric fat strongly indicates ischemia here is another case showing fluid in the mesentery which strongly suggests small bowel ischemia the bowel loops are dilated a transition point is also seen over here and over here suggesting a closed loop obstruction the shape of the dilated bowel is also c shaped this was due to adhesions here is a case of small bowel obstruction with perforation in perforation a small amount of gas is seen outside the bowel loop and in the mesentery gas seen outside bowel loops indicate perforation thank you so much for watching please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos